New Mexico State went into Auburn's home stadium, picked them up by their underwear, put them on a locker, spun them around, and smacked them a couple of times and laughed at them while they were doing it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, week 12 is officially in the books, and that means we are one step closer, or we're not even a step closer, it's here. Week 13, Rival Week. What am I talking about we're one step closer? No, 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 it's Rival Week, starting now. As soon as the game's ended Saturday night heading into Sunday morning, Rival Week has initiated. And don't get me wrong, I would love to sit up here and preview and talk about Rival Week, but before we do that, we gotta recap what went down this weekend. There wasn't a lot of great games, and this is expected because as we all know, Week 12 is normally the worst week in a college football. You got a bunch of SEC teams playing cupcakes and nobodies, but here's the thing with that. One of these SEC teams lost to a nobody. A little foreshadowing. We'll talk about that a little later. Now, a little foreshadowing. Now, a little foreshadowing. We'll talk about that a little later. And similar to last week, not too many upsets. And really, no upsets at all on the grand scheme of things for the college football playoff. However, it was a good week. We got a lot to talk about. Don't act brand new around here. You know what we're about to do. It doesn't get any more simple than the Sunday recap. It really doesn't. And yeah, I don't have time to waste. You don't have time to waste either. We're not doing no intro, none of that. We're getting straight into it. Starting out hot with our 11 a.m. games first. We had Michigan struggle with Maryland. What about that? That was the definition of a struggle win. And I said this in the live reaction, and I still feel the same way. Michigan is really lucky that Tua's younger brother, Talia Tomaola, made six to seven crucial mistakes. Gifted Michigan seven points with a scooping score, then threw a pick six that got called back, but it resulted in seven more points. That's 14 points Talia gifted him. Then he had the grounding. That's another two point. It was just bad. He also threw another interception in between all of that. Maryland lost this game for one reason and one reason only. Quarterback play. That's it. Their defense played out of their mind, and I thought their offense played good enough to win. It just came down to this. If you want to beat a top three team like Michigan, your quarterback has to play good, and Talia didn't do that. Yes, he made some good throws, but you can't make up for all those mistakes that he made. And still, even with that being said, they had a shot at the end of the game to win. And as we all know, he got called for grounding in the end zone. Me, personally, and this is just me, I didn't think it was grounding. For those of you that don't know, that's not something you can review. It is strictly a judgment call, and the official thought it was grounding. But to me, he had the pass rush in his face, and he had a receiver out there. Like, he wasn't intentionally grounding to me. He just didn't have enough arm strength to get the ball there on his back foot. But I didn't think it was a big deal, because the odds of Maryland marching down the field for a 99-yard game win touchdown drive, slim to none. However, for Michigan, they come out there with a win. J.J. McCarthy played arguably one of the worst games I've ever seen him play. And if I was a Michigan fan, I'm not too sure how I'd be feeling about this. Because I originally stated oh, I wouldn't be feeling too good about it, but you know you're not going to play this bad again against Ohio State. They're going to get up for that game. You want a conference game on the road in which you played probably your D-plus game. We'll leave it at this. You won. There's nothing to complain about. You got the big game this week. Also at 11 a.m., I guess we'll talk about this for a couple seconds. Louisville beat Miami. Does this game even matter? Not really. Not to me, at least. Louisville has about a, what, one percent chance of making the college football playoffs so not really an important game i will say this though my amy is arguably the best six and five team in the country because they're a couple plays away from being eight and two or oh, i said eight and two matt you idiot that's only 10 wins i i guess uh, i will say eight and three nine and two something like that i did predict louisville to win this game and it came down to this and it's the reason i picked them i said i don't trust my amy and i'm glad i didn't trust them because they showed you why you shouldn't to sum up this Louisville-Miami game, if you saw when the Miami defenders ran in each other and blocked themselves, that's all you need to know. Moving on down here, though, Arizona beat the absolute crap out of Utah, and I guess this now means that Utah was not as good as we originally thought heading into the season, because they've had a big fall off. Arizona is a really good team, don't get me wrong, but Utah, I mean, come on, man, they didn't even compete in this game. That was a bad look, and heading down here to our 230 CBS game of the week, I was disappointed in Tennessee, and I'm not even a Tennessee fan. To get blown out in that fashion in your home stadium, it's embarrassing. I don't care that Georgia is the number one team in the country. You didn't even compete. That's what would get to me if I was a Tennessee fan. The fact you didn't even compete, and I can't emphasize that enough. And you got lucky Georgia took their foot off the gas because it could have been something like 52 to 10. There's nothing to be said about this game. Extremely short recap. Georgia's really good, and Tennessee's really not. I'm not going to sit up here and praise Georgia. Y'all know they're good. End of story. Do want to throw this in there. Iowa yet again wins the most Iowa game of all 
all time. 15 to 13. You can't make this crap up. And I'm pretty sure in my preview, I can't remember exactly, but I said I have Iowa win in this game, and they're probably going to win something like 15 to 12. If somebody could pull that up or send it to me on Twitter, I would love for you to do that because I couldn't have been any closer. And I'm also pretty sure I said this in the preview as well. Iowa football is extremely similar to my golf game. They're not going to do anything that gets you out of your seat and wows you. They're not going to make flashy plays, but at the end of the day, they get the job done. It's not pretty, and it may even be really ugly at times, but they get the job done. Clemson did beat North Carolina. Don't care. Clemson has fallen off. Ohio State beat the crap out of Minnesota. Also don't care. It's Minnesota. And what about this? Oregon beats the crap out of Arizona State. Also really don't care about that. Oklahoma State, they come back to beat Houston for a second there. I was like, wait a minute. Does Oklahoma State not want to play for the Big 12 Championship? I guess they decided they want to because... I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and if they went out, they will play Texas. Could be wrong about that. Heading into our night games, what about this? The Seminoles were trailing to North Alabama 13-0. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I didn't even get excited for a split second because we know how this goes. They was going to turn it on in the second half, and they did that. But obviously, you know what I'm about to say next. The biggest storyline of this game is... Florida State lost their star quarterback, Jordan Travis, for the rest of the season. How are they going to fare out with their backup quarterback? I have no idea. It's one of those things we'll have to wait and see. They do play Florida next week, and I'll make this clear right now. I don't care their backup quarterback throws for 400 yards against Florida. It's not going to excite me because it's Florida. They're not good. Florida ain't bad, but it's still Florida. Let me remind you, this is what has Florida lost now? Is it five or six games? So I did want to throw that in there. K-State did beat Kansas. That was a big win for them. But the game of the night was Washington and Oregon State. What did I tell you guys heading into this game? Hey, if DJ Oogbadoogie plays really good, Oregon State has a great shot of winning this game. However, on the flip side, if he does not play good, Oregon State will probably lose this game. And, well, 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 what do you know? Take a look at these numbers right here. 15 for 31, not good. 48 completion percentage, 164 yards, also not very good. Zero touchdowns to two INTs, QBR of 71. And I know what everybody's going to say. I had a couple people tweeting at me. Well, Matt, it was raining there. Look, I don't care. Washington and Michael Penish Jr. was also playing in the rain. It was raining, but that doesn't deter from the fact that DJ didn't play that good. If you want to beat the fifth-ranked team in the country, an undefeated team in Washington... I don't care if it's raining as hard as you've ever seen it rain before in your life. DJ Oogabadoogie had to play a great ball game, and he didn't. I wouldn't say he played a bad ball game, but he didn't play a great one. And I knew Damian Martinez was going to get his. 26 carries, 123 yards. He did more than enough. He did his job. It came down to this. Oogabadoogie needed to make one or two more plays, and he didn't do so. As far as it goes for Washington in this game, I didn't learn anything new about them, but I will say this was a great and solid road win. Sloppy and rainy conditions, and they win a game with their defense for a change. If I was a Washington fan, I'd be feeling so good about this win. I know a lot of people are going to say, well, Matt, why would you be feeling good about it? They won by two points. You're right, but the reason I'd be feeling good is because this team has proven they can win games in different ways. Look at all your recent national champions. That's one thing they all have in common. They can win low-scoring games or high-scoring games. I can't tell you enough how good this win is. Washington beating a really solid Oregon State team on the road. That's an awesome win. But going back to this, I really didn't learn too much about Washington. I knew their defense could be decent at times, and their offense, it's still good. That was a big win for them. And what about this game, Missouri and Florida? I know this game doesn't mean anything at all to the college football playoff, but I can't believe Florida gave up that fourth and 17 to end the game. I hated it for the Florida players because that was just a brutal way to lose. And last but not least, before we talk about the biggest update on Saturday, Texas, they beat the Cyclones by 10 points, 26-16. This game had upset City written all over it. Even the Iowa State players, I think it was the left guard. Yeah, yeah, the left guard before the game was like, oh, yeah, we're going to beat Texas, upset them again, and blah, 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 blah. Texas goes in there, and it wasn't pretty, just like all the past, I guess you say, four or five Texas games outside of the BYU game. Wasn't pretty, but they escaped with a win. And whether you like it or not, all Texas has to do is win every single game, and they're going to be in the playoff. I know a lot of Bama fans don't want to hear that, but it's the reality. It doesn't matter if Texas wins their next, how I many, they, yeah, they got two games left. If they win them by one point apiece, doesn't matter. They're getting in. It's as simple as this for Texas. Winning your end, as long as they take care of business, they'll be good. Do want to throw this in there. Quinn Ewers played really good in this game, but come on, man. It's Quinn Ewers, one of my personal favorite quarterbacks in the country. And last but not least, man, it just feels like we're zooming through this recap, but there's not too much to talk about. The biggest update on Saturday, this weekend, I don't think anybody predicted this. No, 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 no. What am I talking about? I know nobody predicted this. New Mexico State got paid 
$1.8 million by Auburn to play them, and they squashed them like a bug, 31-10. to 10. You can't make this crap up. Auburn paid them a mil- over a million, $1.8 million to play them, and they lost by 20. That is beyond mind-boggling to me because Auburn didn't eat. Okay, not only did you just lose the game, but you didn't even compete in the game. Good gosh almighty, Auburn. What are you doing? To put this in perspective, right, Alabama played Chattanooga, and we can make fun of Chattanooga State Water Aquarium Community College all we want, but Alabama only put, <laughs> I can't believe this, they only paid Chattanooga $600,000. Auburn paid New Mexico State $1.8 million, three times that. That's a fun fact for you, but a lot of you didn't know. I assume a lot of you didn't watch this game, and to be honest, there's not too much to be said. Auburn just flat out got dominated. The score tells you everything you need to know. New Mexico State went into Auburn's home stadium, picked them up by their underwear, put them on a locker, spun them around, and smacked them a couple of times and laughed at them while they were doing it. This tells you all you need to know. Auburn had 213 total, not rushing, not passing, total yards of offense. Pitiful, 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 but a lot of your casuals out here, I bet you didn't know this. New Mexico State is now 9-3. and three. What about that? You know what? <laughs> Clap it up for New Mexico State. Great win and great season for them. I'm happy for them, not just because I'm an Alabama fan. I, I don't hate Auburn that much. It really doesn't bother me because Auburn already sucks, but I'm just happy for New Mexico State because that's a huge win. And that's it, guys. I know it was short, but if I can keep things short, simple, and sweet, that's what I try to do. And I'll let this be known right now. This week, week 12, it was a setup for what's going to happen next week in week 13. And what I mean by that is, is this is almost like that appetizer before the entree. This reminds me a lot of volleyball. You know how you got a setter? This was the set, and next week it's going to be the spike. Because I can promise you, chaos will ensue. It's going to happen. No matter what happens in the Michigan-Ohio State game, it's going to be something we talk about for the next two or three weeks. To go on top of that, you got the Iron Bowl. That's always good. I know Auburn just lost to New Mexico State, but you never know what's going to happen in that game. You got Oregon State and Oregon on Friday night. That's going to be all. There's so many rival matchups. Y'all know how it goes. You got the Simmon Rolls playing in Florida. I think that's the battle of the backup quarterbacks. I can't wait, man. I can't wait. Chaos will happen. I'm telling you, it's like a ticking time bomb. I'm extremely curious, though. Let me know your thoughts and everything we talk about down below about the Robin.